Hi folks, my name's Maud Mosley, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome back to Tunes Tuesday, a weekly series where I sit down with queer 2S LGBTQ plus musicians and bands to talk to them about their music, their experiences, and so much more. Today, I am joined by Arizona-based hard rock band, Dollskin. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name's Sydney. I do the singing and sometimes the screaming. I uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm 21 years old. Uh, am I missing anything? I hope not, but that's me. Hi. <laughs> Incredible. Well, it's so great to have you here. And I really want to start by talking about you. So the queer scene, as well as the hard rock and emo scene, are typically associated with substance use. Uh, but I noticed that you're actually straight edge, which is an identity that I've seen kind of come in waves and it definitely has an increase in popularity again lately. What does being straight edge mean to you? I, yeah, being straight edge has been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. I, I, I've gone through, I, I'm an alcoholic and an addict and I am two years in recovery now. Um, but I, I tried AA, I tried CA, I tried NA, and communities like that were always very much so, like, I don't want to say too old, but they were too old for me. Like, it's a bunch of people that push agendas that I don't really agree with, and I didn't feel like I fit in. But then I found Straight Edge um, through, like, the punk community, and I, I read up on, like, the, the history of it and saw that it's a bunch of people that are like me, whether or not they've used before, it's all very, like, supportive. Um, the only thing that was like weird is that like I don't see a lot of like non-men or queer people in general in the community um unless you like look really hard you have to like kind of like look for it to find those people um but I'm finding them which has been really cool and the more I talk about it the more like different kinds of people are kind of like learning about it and getting into it too which is like so cool to, I, I, it feels so cool to be able to like influence people with that but being straight edge means so much more than just like saying no to substance it means that like like I know that if I started drinking again I would probably end up dying very quickly <laughs> it, it it means that I can control myself it means that I can you know do better for myself that's you know the whole point of straight edge is to to acknowledge the fact that you know that you're better without drinking and drugging and smoking and doing whatever <laughs> yeah Absolutely. Thank you for sharing such a, you know, honest and vulnerable answer there. And I think it's so cool that you kind of brought up the history of Straight Edge, because I think one of the things that's really interesting about it is I think it was about in the late 90s, there's this interesting part of Straight Edge history where there was like a scare around it and it made people outside of the scene really uncomfortable. And one of the things that was making people uncomfortable was you know, that idea of like being punk and being anti-establishment was really associated with like drinking and doing drugs. So then people saw this increase of people who weren't drinking or doing drugs and were still anti-establishment. And they were like, what does this mean for us? <laughs> they can do all of that and be sober? What? It, it's really, it's really interesting too, because there's like, it, it the, the movement started in the 80s um or it's been a thing for a long time but it, it got its name and got its reputation around the 80s when uh the band anti-flag released their song straight edge um and that's kind of where the name came from and stuff like that um not anti-flag what wait i can't what band was I personally it? remember uh, one of those bands ah. <laughs> anyone watching this that knows more than me please correct me anyway um but uh and so there's a lot of different versions of being straight edge and the, the, like, I think what scares the most people and why straight edge has such a bad reputation is because of the, what we call the militant straight edge people who are, they like force straight edge down people's throats, like in a violent way. Like there was, it's not very, it's not really a thing anymore, but there's a reason why straight edge is a gang in Chicago. Like, it's literally like, if you identify as straight edge in Chicago, you are technically a part of the gang. <laughs> it's, it's scary, but a lot of straight edge people are just like, I just live like this. Uh, this is just how I am. Um, and I will talk about it. Sometimes straight edge people are a little annoying about it, but that's whatever, that's beside the point. <laughs> a lot of straight edge people just live their life and hope to encourage people through existing without substance. Um, and I think that's what like, confuses people the most is they're like you just you just do that and you're not like you don't like this is just how you are what the fuck <laughs> so 
it's it's really it's really an interesting way of life that I I never was able to wrap my head around until I got sober and I was sober for about a year before no I was sober for like a few months before I found straight edge and I was like this is weird it's punk people that are not using and drinking this is a thing like what <laughs> Yeah. And you definitely bring up important points about the fact that, you know, there can be annoying people in every community. And that's just because people can sometimes be annoying. And that definitely, you know, should not reflect the community as a whole. And then kind of on that note, or sometimes what that stuff is associated with, is one of your most recent releases is Control Freak. And the lyrics speak to a struggle with mental health and its music video features really intense imagery of drowning and being restrained. I also noticed on social media, you noted that you've had the idea for this music video for a while. So what inspired you and pushed you to carry it out? I, I actually had some really like a lot bigger ideas for the music video that we couldn't really uh, get all the way done that's why I I just had my face in the water but I wanted to be entirely in water literally chained to the bottom of like a a water tank um like almost literally drowning myself for the video um just to kind of get the point across of like how intense this song like really means something to us um Megan was the main writer of the lyrics because I it's it's still sometimes hard for me to put my feelings into words but Megan's really good at it and so she had the original idea for like writing a song about how anxiety controls you and how you want to control it back and we kind of like ranted on it she wrote more lyrics and you know put it to the song but the song like I felt I've always felt like I wanted to get deeper and wanted to get more in depth and intense with our our like the art that goes along with the songs um and we found this team, the people who did the Control Street music, music video at Smile Bomb Productions, and they were able to work with us on creating this, this masterpiece. Like, I, I really am such a big fan of it. Um, and I, I, I'm so excited that it turned out the way that it did. But I, I really, like, wanted to make sure people could feel, like, how frustrating it is. Like, how, what, like what we wrote it about is so frustrating and like painful to have to like deal with almost every single day (laughs) so I I really think that we were able to put that all into the whatever three minute song (laughs) you know yeah I think you did a fantastic job with it I mean you're right it is incredible to watch at the same time it can be a little bit uncomfortable but I think the performance you give in it really drives home the point and that feeling and that discomfort that comes from it is kind of doing a great job of putting you in someone's shoes who's you know trying to communicate that they feel that way and speaking of your performance style it's also fairly recently that you publicly came out as trans and you were quick to do things like celebrate trans day of visibility which is so fun and exciting do you think being able to live you know publicly and authentically as who you are will have an impact on your music and performance it it literally already has like I've been trying to find the words to write a song about it and about my 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 you know journey with this it's it's what's crazy is that like I've always felt like something was different and I, I could never really understand it I could never really sit down and think about it because I was I've always been the front woman of the all girl band and so I was like okay this is just who I am like I this is just it and, and I never let myself have a problem with it until I had to sit down and I was stuck in a room just with me and my little thoughts. And I was like, oh shit, okay. I'm seeing all these people talk about it online. And like, I, I'm i just not who I thought I was. You know, I'm not who I've been trying to make myself think I was. Um, and so it's like, as much as I just recently came out publicly, I, I kind of came out as I was discovering it. Um, I, I like to make sure everyone is like, I've always been a very public person. There's not a lot of things I hold to myself ever. Uh, I'm not good with secrets. I just like to talk about things. Um, and so I, as I start learning about myself, I, I talk about it publicly because I know that there's a lot of people that are just now learning about themselves too, especially in quarantine, especially after all of this. And so I just like to 
use my weird thought process and my weird self-discovery to help people understand that they can discover themselves at 21. It's fine. Like, <laughs> that's fine. How, what it takes, what it takes, you know? It took me having to sit down for a few months and then be like, oh, oh, okay, this is, this is different. But I, yeah, all right. Uh, so it, I definitely, like, even just looking back to, to, you know, last year's Trans Day of Visibility, like, hearing myself talk about it, I'm like, you know, like, I'm, um, um sis, uh, I guess, um, and, you know, happy Trans Day of Visibility to people who aren't me. <laughs> like, I always, like, looking back at how I talked about being cis head, like, it, I can see now how much I felt like I had to, like, defend myself, but not to anybody, but, like, more to myself, and so it's like looking back on that, I, I really wish I could have found it earlier because I feel like there was a lot of like, you know, self-hatred that came from feeling like I had to force myself to be something that I wasn't, um, that I could have avoided. But here I am now. <laughs> so, woo! <laughs> Yeah, I think what you bring up with so many people, you know, figuring out more about themselves and questioning their identity more and more during this quarantine process is definitely so true and it is so evident, you know, when you've kind of pulled people away from society a little bit and given them that time and space to be like, what makes me feel comfortable and what makes me feel safe and giving them that area to explore, you know, you're, yeah, you're definitely not alone in that process. And I also like that you bring up your age and, you know, are telling people that it's not too late to explore themselves. Cause I think that's a huge part of being trans is with the way, you know, transphobia has shaped our society. There's no appropriate age to be trans. You know, if you're a kid, you know, everyone's like, oh, you're too young to know. If you're a teenager, it's a phase. The second you stop being a teenager, then it's too late to know. And then there's no trans adults <laughs> is like how it's kind of set up. So I really appreciate you speaking to that point because I do think that really does shape a lot of people's perspectives on the trans community. Absolutely. It, it's, it's like, it, it really stopped me from exploring it very early on, like, as I was, like, thinking about it at first, I was like, no, you know, like, I've, I've already lived my life decently comfortable, you know, for 20 years, like, I, I think, you know, I, I think I'm just, like, in a weird place right now, or whatever, and then I was like, no, 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 look back on the way you thought about people, and the way you thought about yourself, and the way you wanted to pretend like you were a man, and you felt really comfortable when someone thought you were a man, I, like, think about it, think about it for a second, like, just giving myself the space to be like, okay, you are allowed to explore this no matter where you're at. Um, even if even if it was just a phase, even if it was just something that it would have been temporary, like would have made me feel better temporarily, like I'm allowed, you know, I'm allowed to be like, you know, fuck it. Like that's why I went from having all pronouns to just they, them, like, cause it, it does change. It does change. There's not one set way. You don't have to like make the decision and have it be final, you know, ever, really ever. <laughs> That is so true. And I really thank you for speaking to me about that today and speaking to me about your music. If you want to check out Doll Skin, which I highly recommend you do, please support them and all their music at the links below. You can also go check out the Control Freak music video that we were just talking about. I really appreciate you taking the time for this today. Stay tuned for next week's Tunes Tuesday, where we will have more incredible queer artists. And for now, Dolskin will be playing us out. <laughs>